If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before listening on. We're going to begin by considering the equation that relates the resistance of a wire to its length and cross-sectional area. So in that equation, we have the resistance equaling a constant multiplied by the length of the wire divided by its cross-sectional area. What we want to do is solve this equation for the length, L. And to do that, we can multiply both sides of the equation by A over the constant. We have to do it on the right side as well as the left side. And of course, the areas will cancel as will that constant. Now for the area A, we're going to use the area of a circle because in general, a wire is assumed to be a cylinder shape. And of course, the cross-sectional area of a cylinder is a circle. So we know that the area of that circle is pi r squared. So we'll fill that in for the area A. Now at this point, we can plug in all the known values. Notice that this constant rho needs to be looked up in a table. This is known as the resistivity and your textbook probably has a table of values for different resistivities depending on the material. And for copper, the value is 1.7 times 10 to the negative eighth ohm meters. So we'll plug that in. We'll plug in the resistance that was given in the question as five ohms, and then also the radius. Notice they actually gave us the diameter, and so we're gonna have to cut that in half. And we're also gonna have to multiply it by 10 to the minus three in order to convert it into the standard unit of meters. So with all that information, we'll go ahead and plug in. And when we calculate that, we get a length of approximately 57.7 meters. So what we're gonna do now is take the length of this wire and we're going to wrap it around the solenoid. We have to understand that the solenoid is shaped like a cylinder. And so what we're doing is we're taking 57.7 meters of wire and we're wrapping it around that cylindrical solenoid. And we're trying to figure out how many times around it we can wrap the wire. Well, the number of times would simply be the length of wire that we have divided by the circumference of this cylindrical solenoid. We know circumference is equal to two pi r. The radius was given to us, and all we have to do is multiply it by 10 to the minus two to convert it into meters. So we'll take our length and divide it by the circumference of the solenoid, and that will tell us how many times that the wire will turn around the solenoid. And when we compute that, we get a number of turns approximately equal to 920. So that is the correct answer to part A. Now we know that a magnetic field produced by a solenoid is equal to a constant times the number of turns per meter multiplied by the current passing through the solenoid. We'll go ahead and solve this equation for n by dividing both sides of it by the constant times the current. The value of the magnetic field was given to us in the question, as was the value of the current i. And then mu naught is a constant equal to 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. So we'll go ahead and plug in. When we compute this, we get a value of n approximately equal to 7.96 times 10 to the positive 3. And that would be turns per meter. Now recall that we figured out the number of turns of wire required. So the total length of the solenoid is going to be equal to the number of turns of wire divided by the number of turns per meter. If that's a little confusing, just think about the units. You're gonna have turns in the numerator and then you're dividing that by turns per meter. And so algebraically, the turns would cancel out and the meters would get shifted to the numerator. We would be left with an overall unit of meters, which is indeed the length that we're looking for. So we'll divide capital N by lowercase n, and that'll give us the length. And when you simplify that, you get approximately 0.12 meters, which is equivalent to 12 centimeters when we move the decimal over two places to the right. So that indeed is the correct answer to part B. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon. Also, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. You're welcome to send your own question into the email address on the screen and I'll do my best to post an answer to it on YouTube.